Sir Mo Farah leads international protests against Donald Trump, saying the Queen made him a knight. Now the US president has made him an alien. Demonstrations across America gather pace amid mounting calls for Theresa May to cancel Donald Trump's state visit to Britain. Good evening. The Somali-born British athlete Samo Farah is, he said himself, a living example of what can happen when governments around the world show compassion. Now, in a heartfelt denunciation of Donald Trump's executive order banning travellers from seven mainly Muslim countries, he finds himself unable to return to his family at his training base in America. As the protests escalate, Theresa May, who was initially reluctant to condemn the ban, ordered her foreign secretary and home secretary to phone their American counterparts to express their concerns. But Downing Street is insisting the president's state visit to Britain will go ahead. Donald Trump, meanwhile, has shrugged off the chaos and consternation, tweeting that the US needs strong borders. Jane Dodge reports. <laughs> These are the lucky ones. Hannah Tahi was reunited with her partner after being held for five hours at Los Angeles airport. It didn't seem like anyone knew what was going on and a lot of people were very frustrated, a lot of kind of arguments happening and all that. It was, it was a very tense room for sure. No happy ending for Hussein Kushbaksi. Waiting to collect his brother, he was told he'd been deported. I don't know what they have to do. He, we run away from the Iranian country. They do something like this, but we didn't know we're going to have the same situation here. I'm a US citizen about 15, 20 years old, yes. And my brother is didn't do nothing wrong in no place in the world. And I didn't do nothing wrong. Hussein's brother had a green card. Up until Friday, it gave you permanent residence in the US. Not anymore. Some weren't even allowed to board a plane. Fuad Suleiman had been granted a visa by the American embassy in Baghdad. This is my fault. It's now worthless. Donald Trump does not trust his employees, his staff. What, what does he, he say about this? What does this mean? Is it a forgery? This is from, from the embassy in Baghdad. Thousands of protesters gathered at airports across the country. They're incensed by what they see as a racist ban on Muslims. Refugees from Syria are banned indefinitely. Anyone from Iraq, Syria, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan and Yemen won't get in for the next three months, including those with dual nationality. that has a refugee program and what Donald Trump did in the last 24 hours is disgusting, disgraceful, completely un-American and I'm here in protest. I'm very upset about everything that's happening. I think we're being cruel. I think we're being inhumane. Last night there was a victory of sorts for protesters. A federal judge issued an emergency order temporarily stopping the deportation of refugees and visa holders who've been detained. But as far as President Trump's concerned, it's all going according to plan. You see it at the airport, you see it all over. It's working out very nicely. Thank you guys. Mr. Trump passed the baton to his chief of staff to defend the ban. Perhaps some of these people should be detained uh, further. And if they're folks that shouldn't be in this country, they're going to be detained. And so I apologize for nothing here. Iran and Iraq, which are both on Mr. Trump's list, have threatened a reciprocal ban on U.S. citizens entering their countries. The Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has renewed his government's commitments to welcoming refugees. And the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, has described the ban as unjustified. With America and the world forced to get used to Mr. Trump's new extreme vetting, only fighting talk from the man himself. He's justified his tough stance by describing security in Europe and beyond as a horrible mess. Well, our Washington correspondent, Kylie Morris, joins me now live from Washington. Well, you heard it there from Donald Trump, horrible mess. But this implementation of this policy, whatever you think of the think of rights and wrongs, it has been messy, hasn't it? 
Very messy, Cathy. I mean, there's a lot of confusion, particularly for green card holders, who many of whom are still being held. We understand Rains previous at least has acknowledged that a few dozen uh, people are being held in airports. What are their legal rights? Lots of lawyers are, are working on that. The ACLU, the Civil Liberties Union, who had that win overnight, obviously are desperate to overturn this ban on the basis that it is unconstitutional. But I think we have to be careful to remember that this is probably the, exactly the kind of horrible mess that Donald Trump wanted in the sense that he wanted controversy. He thrives on controversy and conflict. This is a ban that he had promised. It's a ban that his supporters wanted and he has achieved that. I think though what is also critical is the, the silence from Republicans in Congress, people who, who had criticized the ban when Donald Trump was a candidate. Now that he's president, it's all gone very quietly. They, they will win this one, but there will be many challenges along the way. Kylie Morris in Washington, thank you. Well, from hand-holding and hand-shaking to hand-wringing, Theresa May is counting the cost of her trips to the US and to Turkey. The PM's initial refusal to condemn President Trump's refugee ban and her subsequent about turn have led to a storm of criticism from political opponents, members of her own party and one of Britain's most celebrated Olympic athletes. As Jane Deeth reports. Samo Farah, Olympic champion, proud Brit, national treasure. But he fears he's one of those President Trump says he doesn't want in America. He was born in Somalia, although he grew up here. And there's confusion about whether the US's so-called Muslim ban will bar those born in one of seven Muslim-majority countries. There's a risk the athlete who's away training in Ethiopia may not be able to go home to Oregon. <laughs> this afternoon, worried he may not be welcome back in the US, Samo issued a statement. I am a British citizen who has lived in America for the past six years, working hard, contributing to society, paying my taxes and bringing up our four children in the place they now call home. It's deeply troubling that I will have to tell my children that Daddy might not be able to come home to explain why the president has introduced a policy that comes from a place of ignorance and prejudice. Samo said, the Queen made me a knight. Donald Trump seems to have made me an alien. Baghdad-born Conservative MP Nadim Sahawi says he's banned from the US. The order says aliens from those countries, so country of origin applies. Um, I've got two sons at Princeton University. Um, they were due to be here tomorrow because they've got a short break. Um, now, they're born and bred in the UK, but if they get asked where your parents are originally from, or your grandparents, then there, there is a risk of them being stopped going back to university next Sunday. Hundreds of thousands of Britons born in countries like Iraq, Iran, Libya and Yemen could be affected. Yet yesterday, the Prime Minister seemed to be saying the visa restrictions were America's business and America's business alone. Well, the United States is responsible for the United States policy on refugees. Some are angry she was so hands-off on this issue after promising to challenge President Trump. Tory MP Heidi Allen tweeted her to say strong leadership means not being afraid to tell someone powerful they're wrong. The government's now saying Mrs May doesn't agree with the immigration clampdown, but the row shows how useful it is to have the influence which comes with a special relationship. Where we see uh, that British nationals could be caught up with this, then clearly we have a role to play in terms of representing them and, and, and making those representations, and we've made that uh, very clear. I think this is an indication of why it's important that we have got a relationship with the new president. Hundreds of thousands have signed a petition calling for Donald Trump's state visit to be cancelled. Theresa May so might not roll the away the red UK carpet, but in the last hour, number 10 has said she's ordered Foreign Thank Secretary you, Boris Johnson you, and Home well, Secretary well, Amber Rudd to get on the phone to the states about the travel ban. The Prime Minister has realised the President's policies are her problem. Well, we did ask to speak to someone from the government about President Trump's immigration ban, but no one was available. But I am joined now by the former business minister, the Conservative MP, Anna Soubry. Uh, Anna Soubry, Donald Trump has been tweeting that Christians in the Middle East have been executed in large numbers, that the US needs strong borders. What do you think of that justification for his ban? 
Well, there's no justification whatsoever. And as Mo Farrow said, Farrow said, it is based, unfortunately, these are uncomfortable truths, but on ignorance and prejudice. It is outrageous. And I'm very pleased that the Prime Minister has instructed both the Home Secretary and the Foreign Secretary to get on to America and to make our views very well known. Well, of course, Theresa May has done that rather belatedly. At first, she refused to condemn the ban. And obviously, we had the spectacle of her holding hands with the President of the US. Um, do you sort of yeah, understand? She didn't hold hands with him, Cathy. That's a bit of a... I've seen the footage. He escorted her down some steps. She did not hold hands with him in the way that it has been uh, represented in the media. But she nevertheless has been cozying up to the president, hasn't she? I mean, are you entirely comfortable with that? Do you understand that, you know, she's got to preserve this special relationship so it's difficult for her to condemn where you are free to do so? There's a huge difference between your words cozying up and preserving the special relationship that undoubtedly exists between our two nations. And I think she very ably set out our country's views about that relationship in that excellent speech that she gave in Philadelphia. Uh, and she has to do these things because he is the President of the United States and we need to have a good relationship with him. That doesn't mean to say that when he is wrong, and he is often wrong that we don't have the courage to stand up and say exactly that. And I, I don't think that we've done anything other than be very firm in what we are saying. And if it needs repeating, what, what Trump is doing is disgraceful. It's outrageous. It offends everything that is true to British values and, I believe, to American values and, indeed, to the values of Muslims throughout the whole of the world. Well, why do you think Theresa May didn't feel she could say what you've just said when she was questioned about it in Turkey? Well, I, I think actually, no doubt, she had to find out exactly what was happening and so on and so forth. And in any event, we are where we are and she's made it very clear that she does not support Trump on this and she's given her instructions to both the Foreign Secretary and the Home Secretary. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in actually now what we try and achieve by making uh, President Trump realise that what he's done is wrong. I mean, it's factually inaccurate. There's no justification for this whatsoever. He's chosen seven countries, actually have never had a single emigrant or, in fact, somebody, uh, even with parents that have emigrated to the United States, that have been involved in any uh, uh, terrorist atrocities in that country. And the so, three countries where there is evidence, remarkably, aren't on the list. So it's flawed in every way, factually, so, morally, and it will achieve nothing but more division and more terror and uncertainty in our world. And so do you think Number 10 has also been very clear that the state visit, Donald Trump's state visit to Britain, will still go ahead? Do you think that's the right call, or would you join calls to think again on that? No, I, if I'm, I may be wrong on this, but actually I thought the invitation has been extended by Buckingham Palace. It's not the invitation of the government, it's the invitation of Buckingham Palace, so it is for them. Look, there's a very good argument uh, that you, the reason why you engage with people like Trump is not just because he's the President of the United States, but you actually want to, dare I say, educate the man as to why so many of his views are unpleasant. Uh, and he's plain wrong. So the state visit should go ahead. Do that, bring him to our country and let him see how we treat Muslim people uh, and the respect that they properly are held in. And also he can learn how you can keep your borders safe if you have good security and intelligence without doing outrageous, stupid bans like this. And what kind of welcome should he get from the British people on that visit? Well, I think he's going to get a mixture, isn't he? I always feel it's, it's dignity is important in all these matters. Shouting and screaming is not the way that you win arguments, uh, but dignity, and sometimes that can be actually silence, but making sure you make the case uh, in a powerful way and, and actually okay. leading by example. Anna and Subri, that is what we need to do in our country. Anna Subri, thank you very much for joining me. Well, I've also been down to the Chinese New Year celebrations at Trafalgar Square to talk above the din to the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. I began by asking him whether he would travel to the US or stay away in solidarity with protesters. You know, last year during the presidential elections, uh, I remember President Trump saying uh, when he was a candidate that although he wanted to ban Muslims from the USA, he'd make an exemption, an exception for me as the Mayor of London. I was quite clear then don't make an exception for me. There's nothing exceptional about me. There are millions and millions of Muslims around the world who love America, who love Americans, who want to visit America to study, to work as a tourist, and this ban will affect them 
I don't be made an exception. And we've seen today already a consequence of this ban. Directors nominated for Oscars banned from the United States of uh, America. And what sort of message is that uh, sending? You know what? I don't want in those circumstances a red carpet being rolled out for President Trump. In the circumstances where there is a ban in place, there shouldn't be a state visit to the uh, UK. And I'm appalled that our Prime Minister in those circumstances would uh, have uh, the President of the United States of America on a state visit to the UK. So no state visit until this ban is lifted. No. While there is a ban in place, I don't see how you can be rolling out the red carpet for a president to be coming to the United Kingdom. So just to be clear, I mean, the ban on Syrian refugees is indefinite. You're saying while that stays, there should be no state visit, it should be cancelled. I'm quite clear. While there is a cruel, while there is a shameful ban in place, we should not be rolling out the red carpet for the president of the United States of America. But don't you think Theresa May is in a difficult position? She wants to preserve that special relationship. Do you understand diplomatically that she perhaps had to bite her tongue? You know, one of the joys of being mates with somebody is you can stand shoulder to shoulder with them when they need your support in solidarity, but you call them out when they're wrong. Of course, it's undeniable around the world uh, stability, security is being undermined by Islamist terrorism. Donald Trump would say that's why he's been forced to instigate this ban. What's your response? You know the to that? irony? So called ISIS, Daesh, they say Western values are incompatible with Islam. They say you can't be both a Westerner and a Muslim. Inadvertently, President Trump is playing into that narrative and saying you can't be both a Westerner and be a Muslim. You can't be somebody who's a practicing Muslim and love America and want to visit America. Why would you do that? Sadiq Khan, thank you very much. A U.S. special forces operation in Yemen authorized by President Trump has resulted in the death of one American commando with a further three injured. Three al-Qaeda leaders were also reportedly killed. The dawn raid, backed by helicopters, led to a firefight in Beda province. Yemeni officials have said dozens of suspected militants and several civilians were also killed. The U.S. military said American forces did not seize any prisoners in the operation. Let's take a look at the sport now. And with Roger Federer now 35 years old and Rafael Nadal recovering from a potentially career-ending injury, it was the Australian Open final that no one expected to see, but their fans really wanted. And the famous rivalry lived up to its expectations with a five-set thriller, as our sports reporter Jordan Jarrett Bryan found out. 31 majors between two of the greats who even themselves questioned if this meeting on this stage would ever happen again. It's one of sports, never mind tennis's greatest rivalries, and Federer in this final took the first set. Nadal soon levelled up. Both took another set each, the 17-time champion on numerous occasions using his weapon of choice. The Roger Rafa never-ending box set was just getting started and the crowd wanted more. He's missed it. They're back on serve. Nobody seems to bring out the best in Federer like Nadal, but the tide seemed to be turning away from the Spaniard. He's broken. And the 35-year-old with the help of Hawkeye won an emotional 18th Grand Slam and fifth Aussie title to confirm his status as the greatest tennis player of all time. Football and this weekend's FA Cup upsets have continued with non-league Sutton beating championship team Leeds. Sutton's Jamie Collins put his side in the fifth round for the first time with a calmly taken second half penalty. The 1-0 victory was greeted by a pitch invasion at the final whistle. League One Millwall also produced a shock, beating Premier League Watford 1-0. Steve Morrison scored the winning goal with a close-range volley five minutes from the end to earn his side a place in the fifth round. Celtic have thrashed hearts to extend the club's unbeaten domestic run to 27 games. Brendan Rodgers' side won 4-0 at Parkhead, breaking the record set by the Celtic team who won the 1967 European Cup. We're back tomorrow at 7. Until then, that's Channel 4 News. A very good evening.